So right now I'm doing the drywall on the studio here. Um, cutting the sheets, unfortunately it's over eight foot. So I have eight foot uh, by four foot boards. And i uh, got my tools out and everything, ready to go. Just got out of the shower from working all day. And now I'm back at it in my own shit. So, I finally get to work on my own shit, you know. So I got a little setup here. Um, just working off a little something around the house, you know, just... <sighs> Long days, long days. It's already nine, almost 15, nine, 10 right now. I went to a NA meeting right after work and now I'm finally getting to do something for myself. And I'm just really trying to get this thing done um, because I write a lot and uh, I like to have the choice to, you know, when I'm feeling like inspiration uh, to be able to just jump in the studio and like I freestyle sometimes and sometimes I write, but like I want to capture the moment. I always believe in my uh, personal opinion, I believe that uh, everything is time sensitive. You have to take the opportunity right then and there. Uh, for me, if I don't write what I'm thinking, or if I don't uh, put it on track and you know, just get it out, sometimes I'll even just take my phone and I'll say it to uh, looking in the video. I'll just say something. That way, I capture those thoughts because my thoughts are always fleeting. My brain's always going, I'm thinking about a thousand different things, and if I can think of something that that I really like, that I would like to put on a song, and I go ahead and write it down, I got the little app on my phone, lyric notepad, um, or I could just come in here and, you know, whenever I want to release some, some steam, just chill by the end of my day, you know, Come in here, be in my own little world, and get some personal relief for me. That's what I like to do. I enjoy it, and uh, you know, it's good for me. So, all right. So I'm gonna have to cut this drywall sideways, which I don't care. I'm doing the finishing myself anyway. Um, if if you have the option, um, this wall is higher than eight foot, so I can't stand the board up because I'm still gonna have a border. So it makes it easier just to cut, boom, and then boom. If you don't understand what I'm trying to say, just watch the way I, I put it up right now, and uh, it's pretty simple. So you just use a, it's called a T-square because it's shaped like a T. It's four foot uh, long and it has one end to square off of. So this has a little lip. You just put it on top and you're good to go. Flip it back over, sit it down. And now it won't tip either way. People always try to stand it upright with the top heavy part. It always falls. Alright, so I already cut this. Then I thought, shit, I might as well do a video. So here we are. If you're trying to do something like this in your own spot, uh, because I've done it. You know, several times, some, sometimes people ask me, like, hey, you know, I want to build a studio in my crib. And uh, so this is pretty much step-by-step -step instructions. Very simple. Doesn't take much money. Uh, if you're trying to build a booth like this, between the wood and drywall and mud, 
wanted everything to do a professional level, might cost you like 50 bucks. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on how fancy or how big, but it's not really much money. Uh, the, the most you know, expensive thing is the labor. So it takes you some hours to do it, but if you're gonna do it yourself, you're saving on the labor. Here's how you do it. So I have the board cut. Now, whenever you lay a sheet, you need to drill. You can use any kind of drill as long as you got a you know, Phillips tip, uh, preferably. Just use drywall screws. They are short. Um, inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths, something like that. They, uh, you can either get coarse thread or fine thread. And uh, then there's some that have a different tip on them that are called self tappers. So it depends on if you're building with wood or metal, um, whatever you're screwing into you want to use, but you can use anything. It's just some are better with other products. You're using metal, you don't want really to use wood screws. Wood screws are just wider, uh, coarse. Alright, and you always want to butt it to the top because when you're doing the finishing, then you don't have to go all the way up high. You know, and have a little border at the bottom. And, um, Oh, it's less finishing, um, and if you're putting a baseboard, you might not even need, well, me, I might not even need that little uh, bit down there at the bottom. Alright, skip through to the next part. Alright, so you want to you want to uh, put the the drywall screws every foot, 16 inches, right about. And the studs are in between uh, 16 to 24 inches apart. So these are 24. I just put one stud on each side. It's not gonna get pushed around or nothing. I'm not really worried, but it's exactly 24, so it's exactly where I needed it. And you might be thinking, but Jimmy, there's a big gap on the wall. What do I do about that? Well, that's where the drywall finishing comes in. Uh, it's pretty much, it's just a mud uh, made out of the same material, gypsum, and it's just wet. It's a paste. You take a piece of specially made for paper. Uh, they also have corner beef for the corners for the outside. But for the inside, you can use paper or you can use mesh tape. And you just use a trowel, um, mud wood. I'll show you on the next, when I'm to that point. This is how you put up the drywall. It's very simple. So I just finished the drywall. Took about an hour. You know, I know it's not going to be so quick, probably for everybody, but just two sheets. Just did the outside. I actually don't have enough to do the inside, so. Um, I was thinking I could go get some more, but Home Depot's closed right now, it's after 10. And right now I can start doing the corners and doing the uh, seams. 
and cover all the nails uh, with the drywall joint compound. Um, it's very, uh, pretty quick. You've got to do a couple coats though. So in between it drying, you, know, you want to give yourself some time um, in between coats. So you do one coat, let it dry, come back to it, do another coat. Um, if you're good at it, you might do it in two coats. Usually it's three, um, but you could do as many as you need to. So <laughs> if you're not really used to it, depending on how good you want it too, you know, you might not really care about how it looks, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get some mud uh, mixed up and get to cracking. So I'm finishing the uh, last bit of the first coat. Already did most of it. You just want to do a nice light skim over it, but where it fills in all the holes and cracks, anything that it's going to be forming. May vary. Now, we'll go ahead and finish off the top and the little bottom right here. And then I let that dry and hit the next coat once it's dry. This was the pre-mixed joint compound, um, but you can use the bags of mud as well. You want to mix that up. That's what I usually would use for this, but I had uh, uh, two things of uh, joint compound, so I just use this. It just takes a little longer to dry. 